join us and discover beautiful beaches, rugged landscapes, pretty towns, desolate mountain ranges that sweep down to stunning lakes, unique architecture, history and folklore, no shamrocks, no shillelaghs and definitely no shenanigans. Just make it Ireland. So our film today is a little more controversial than usual, but it's good I think to deal with the topical issues. These young guys are collectively known as Kneecap. They're a rap trio from West Belfast who've been getting a lot of attention recently. This woman perhaps needs less of an introduction, or perhaps not, as many of you are watching from outside the UK and Ireland. So this is Kemi Badenoch, a British Conservative Party politician. So as you've seen from the thumbnail, Badenoch and Kneecap have recently crossed swords. So why should we even be mentioning them in the same sentence? They would seem to be so distant, culturally and politically, poles apart you might say, that how can there even be a connection between them? Well it's actually very interesting how these two recently came to clash and it poses some very interesting questions that we can take away at the end of it all. And it would be interesting to get your comments on that so please watch to the end. But first it's important for those who might not be familiar with these protagonists that I give a bit of background on each. In the green corner we have Kneecap, a vibrant if controversial rap and hip hop trio coming out of West Belfast. They rap in a mix of Irish and English. Now that in itself can be controversial in the Northern Ireland context, though of course it shouldn't be. But perhaps the most explosive aspect of Kneecap's work is their open hostility to British rule in the six counties. This political view is expressed in keeping with hip hop street culture and Kneecap substitute the American gangster with references to West Belfast hoods. Their music references drug culture alongside their brand of street republicanism. It's worth mentioning that kneecappings were punishments meted out by the Republican Provisional IRA during the Troubles for drug dealing and other antisocial behaviour. An irony, kneecap says, is not lost on them. Their anti-establishment rhetoric is infused with humour but designed to provoke and it's done just that since their first single was banned from RTE's Irish speaking station Arna G for its profanity and drug references. They've also attracted criticism from Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party for their chanting of Brits out at a concert in Belfast. But their rising success since 2017 has seen them release two albums, 10 singles and a feature film which represented Ireland at the Academy Awards. Now in the blue corner we have Kemi Badenoch, current leader of the British Conservative Party. She's previously served in the cabinet under the very short-lived Liz Truss Premiership and then under Rishi Sunak. She's a member of parliament for North West Essex. She's described as being on the right wing of the Conservative Party and she cites Erie Neve and Margaret Thatcher as her political heroes. Perhaps relevant to this film, the former was assassinated by the Irish National Liberation Army in 1979 and the latter of course was almost killed in the IRA's Brighton Hotel bombing in 1984. She's been described as anti-woke and describes herself as a net zero sceptic voting against measures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. She's perhaps every bit as controversial as Kneecap in some of her statements which include for example denying that all cultures are equally valid and supporting strengthening ties with Israel and the UK, describing Israel as showing moral clarity in dealing with its enemies. Perhaps again important in relation to this film, in 2019 Kemi Badenoch as the current Equalities Minister abstained on a parliamentary vote to extend same-sex marriage rights to Northern Ireland. She was appointed Secretary of State for Business and Trade in 2023, a position in which she faced accusations of bullying. So that's the profile on the two opponents. You can see immediately that Kneecap and Badenoch are never going to see eye to eye. But what brought them into each other's lines of fire in the first place? Well it all started when Kneecap applied for and was successful in gaining a grant from the Music Export Growth Scheme for £14,250. Kemi Badenoch, business secretary at the time, stepped in and refused the grant. Kneecap took the British government to court accusing them of discrimination against him on the grounds of nationalist and political opinion. The court found the British government to be acting unlawfully and awarded Kneecap the sum of the grant £14,250. 
NECAP donated the money in two equal payments to youth organisations, one working in a nationalist area and the other in a unionist part of Belfast. So, given that the Good Friday Agreement enshrined the notion that citizens living in Northern Ireland have the right to call themselves Irish or British and indeed hold passports for whichever nationality they identify, is it then legitimate for citizens to criticise either the government or the status quo of either the Republic of Ireland or the UK? Well, I can answer that for you actually. Undoubtedly, we should all be able to be harshly critical of governments and government policy in any democracy. But with that assumption agreed, the follow-on question is interesting as it speaks to the dichotomy that exists in terms of the British state in Northern Ireland. And that is, is it justified that arts funding can be granted to individual artists or groups who oppose the state itself? Now you might suggest that it's the art's very function to question such things. And should government politicians be involving themselves in censoring what they feel is inappropriate? Is that in itself undemocratic? And where could that lead us? And are there issues here in terms of freedom of speech? Finally, given that the people of West Belfast and the wider fan base of NECAP also pay taxes, does it not follow that they should be eligible for government grants, regardless of their political views? So there's a lot to think about there. I hope you'll let me know your views in the comments. Also please like the video and subscribe if it's been interesting or informative. And of course, you can now donate to the channel by buying me a pint. Go to the second paragraph in the description below the video and you'll find a link taking you directly to the donation page. All your donations, large and small, go directly back into keeping the Naked Ireland videos coming. That's it for this week. I hope I've given you something to ponder. And I hope you'll all join me next week for the next Naked Ireland video.